history. My name is Alicia and in this week's live lesson we are going to talk about how to talk about upcoming changes. The focus grammar points for today's lesson will be future tense. We're going to cover will and going to. Just a very quick refresher. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about future passive. So how do we use will and going to to create passive sentence structures to talk about the future? These will be our focus grammar points today, and we'll also practice making some questions at the end very quickly. So we have a lot to cover today. I hope we can get through it all. Uh, so as you join, I think everything is going, as you join, please, 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 please make sure to hit the like button and share this video so that other people can find today's lesson. It will help us with the algorithm. While we wait for everyone to connect with us, to join with us, to join us live, uh, a couple super quick announcements as always. First, the team has a 35% off sale uh, for you. You can find the information from the link in the YouTube description below the video or in the Facebook information section above this video if you're watching on Facebook. You will find this page if you click that link. On this page, you can go down to find more details about the things you can do with our lessons and our courses. So if you think you want to study with us or if you've been thinking about it for some time, check it out. Now is a good time. You will be able to get our courses for 35% off. Pretty good deal. So check this out. You can find the link below the video if you're watching on YouTube and above the video if you're watching on Facebook. So. Do that if you've been thinking about it. Now's a good time. Also, uh, announcement number two, as always, if you have questions for me, please send me your questions, but not in YouTube, not in Facebook chats, not in Instagram messages, not in Twitter, or I don't even know where you might send them. <laughs> please send them to the official Ask Alicia question submission page. The official question submission page is at englishclass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. There is a link in the YouTube description, or you will also find a link in every episode of Ask Alicia. You will find one in the YouTube description there. So send me your questions, please. I always need questions from you. Please send them. So I will definitely 100% read your question if you send it. 100% guarantee. And then I will maybe <laughs> choose your question for the series. So if you have questions about culture, about grammar, about vocabulary, some word difference you found somewhere or thought about, whatever it is, send it to me. I'll check it out and maybe we'll talk about it. So this is an old, old, old screenshot, but this is about the difference between especially and specifically. It's a good question. So send me your questions. I'm waiting for them. <laughs> okay. All right. So those are our announcements. It looks like everything is going okay. I think everybody is here. <laughs> Let's see. YouTube. It looks like everyone is here on YouTube. Welcome everybody. Uh, I think it's all rolling and Facebook also seems okay. Uh, hi, uh, Sergey and Miguel from Guatemala. Welcome. Hi, Hazel. Thanks. Uh, Dilshan. Hello. Shailesh from India. Welcome everybody. Le Huang Tian, hello. Uh, Marquez from Brazil, hi. Okay, good. Everybody is on Facebook or YouTube, gosh, and Facebook. Facebook, are you here? Hello, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. What? <laughs> I can't scroll, Facebook, sorry. Uh, Mijan says it's time to go to bed. Well, goodbye. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, John and da Dharma, hello. And, oh, sorry, sorry, Dolma, sorry. <sighs> so many names today, lots of people joining. Okay, let's get started. If you haven't, please make sure to hit the like button and share this video. It helps the algorithm. It helps us with the algorithm. So I will do that. I will like and I will share this video. But I'm, uh, okay, cool. And okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at our topics for today, okay? So uh, today, yes, our topic for today is upcoming changes. These are our two focus grammar points. Future tense, simple future tense, and future passive sentence structure. So let's take a look at how we use these uh, to, together to talk about uh, our upcoming changes. So first, let's look at today's lesson boards. If you wanna take a screenshot, now is your first chance. So first, we are going to review simple future tense. We're going to review will and won't and going to, not going to. I am not going to talk in detail about this point because there are many videos on the channel. So please search the channel for more information. 
Part two will be about future passive. How do we make future passive sentences and why should we use them? And finally, we're going to talk about some question patterns that use both of these uh, grammar structures, okay? So let's get started. First, we are going to review. Let's do a review of simple future tenses. So I have made many videos about will and won't and going to, not going to. There are many live videos uh, and not live videos <laughs> about these grammar points. So if you want to know more about one of these, uh, I have videos on the channel already. So please search the English Class 101 YouTube channel for like future tense or will or won't or going to, not going to. You will find many lessons. So let's just review these grammar points today. Okay, so first, future tense, simple future tense, let's start with will and the negative, won't. So when do we use this form of future tense? We use when making a decision in the moment. When making a decision in the moment. So when you're, for example, you are talking to your friend and your friend asks you about your plans for something and you decide in that moment, you can use will to describe that. You decided in the conversation. You can use uh, will or won't. Then you also use this when you are not sure about your plan. Use this when you are not sure about your plan. So when you are thinking about some idea, something maybe you want to do, it's not 100%, you can use will to describe that. So these are the two main points uh, we usually cover for the basic uses of will. So for example, I think I'll have a salad for lunch. I think I'll have a salad for lunch. Here is my will. I will. So remember, we can use will in the reduced form. I think I will have a salad for lunch. Okay? So here is a decision made in the moment. So at the restaurant, mm, I think I'll have a salad for lunch, okay? And here's one for a plan you're not sure of. So this weekend, I'll probably stay home. This weekend, I'll probably stay home. In this sentence, here's I will, right? I'll probably, I'll probably. So this plan is not 100% sure, right? But I'll probably sounds maybe 80% sure, 75, 80% maybe. So this weekend, I'll probably stay home. So we use will in these two situations, okay? Let's compare to going to. When do we use going to and the negative form not going to, okay? So first, we use going to for decisions you made before before the conversation. Decisions you made before the conversation. So for example, uh, you made a plan with a friend before you talked to your coworker, or you made a plan with your family before you talked to your friend and you're talking about those plans. So we use going to for those decisions to talk about those plans you made earlier. Okay. Second, we use going to and not going to when you are sure about your plan. You're sure. So 100%. This is my plan. I know. Okay? So let's look at some examples of these two. First, I'm going to visit my parents tomorrow. I'm going to visit my parents tomorrow. So this plan is sure, right? 100%. I've decided. I'm going to visit my parents tomorrow. And probably you made the decision before the conversation. So your friend says, what are you going to do tomorrow? You say, I'm going to visit my parents tomorrow. So we use going to to express that. If you say, I will visit my parents tomorrow, it sounds strange because you made the decision earlier and you're sure about the plan, right? It sounds kind of strange to use will in this case. Okay, let's look at our last example. We're not going to buy a new car. We're not going to buy a new car. Here we have the negative, not going to. We're not going to buy a new car is a decision you made before the conversation. For example, 
you were thinking about buying a new car and you decided, mm, actually, no, <laughs> now is not a good time. So you can explain to your friend, we're not going to buy a new car, okay? So this is the difference between going to and will. Again, there are many videos on the English Class 101 channel and website about these topics. So if you want to practice this more, definitely please go to the channel, English Class 101 channel, or for our members, you can go to the website and get lots more practice with these two, okay? But these are very important for today's lesson. All right, I'm looking for your questions and comments. Some of you are sending some example sentences. Uh, Ahmed says, I'm going to go to the grocery store tomorrow. Perfect. Um, Miguel says, I'm going to do the dishes after this class. Um, Kanwal says, we are not going to create a new project. Good. Oh, wow. So many examples are coming. Wow. Um, uh, Marcus says, I'm not, I'm not, not I not, but I'm not going to buy a new car. Okay. Um, to Ta-san, I hope I said your name correctly, says, I think I will have a cake for dessert. I'm going to go to the beach tomorrow. Perfect example sentences. Okay, on Facebook, uh, Alberto says, I'm going to play soccer with, well, sorry, the comment got cut off there. I don't know. That looks good though. Uh, Havo says, we're not going to the beach this weekend. Good. Uh, Sasindu says, I'm going to explain our decision. Okay. Immacula says, I will cook tomorrow. Okay, that could be good if you decide in that moment. I'll cook tomorrow. Nice ones. Okay, your example sentences look good. Uh, Nayasa Lebreton, I hope I said that correctly, says, can I use won't in these examples? Yes, I didn't use a negative example uh, in part one, but we are going to look at uh, some, I think I have one with won't here. Uh, in part two or part three. But yes, you can, of course, use won't. Uh, so we tend to use that a lot <clears throat> when we make the decision in the moment. Like, oh, no, I won't do that, right? When you refuse something. So yes, you can use won't. Okay, let's take a super quick break and then we'll go to part two uh, to talk about future passive sentence structures, okay? So if you missed it earlier, the team has this 35% off sale, hooray! So if you want to study with our lessons and with our courses, now might be a good time uh, to check out uh, your options. So if you click the link below the video if you're watching on YouTube or above the video if you're watching on Facebook, you will find this page. So this has a lot of information about the different things, the different study tools and study resources you can find at EnglishClass101.com. So scroll down, go down on this page, and you can take a look at the different options, the different tools you can find uh, with our lessons and our courses. So please check this out, please take a look. If you have been thinking about studying with us, if you've been thinking about trying um, our lesson, now is a good time to do so. So you can find the link below the video if you're watching on YouTube and above the video if you're watching on Facebook. Okay, let's go to part two. And if you have not, please, please, please make sure to hit the like button and share this video. Other people will be able to find it. It helps us with the algorithm, yeah? Okay, let's continue. Some of you are still sending your example sentences. It looks good. Let's continue though to part two. So part two is going to take some time. <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's take a look. Future passive. So. We talk, I talk a bit um, every year about passive, how we make the passive form of English and when do we use it. But today I want to talk about future passive expressions. So passive grammar is very, very useful. We're going to review passive. What is passive? Why should I care? And we're going to talk about how we use passive in the future. So first, let's talk about how we make a passive future sentence. So to do this, we use simple future tense. We just practice this, right? Will and won't and going to, not going to. So we choose one here and we follow the same rule, right? Will or going to. Then we have a be verb and we have the past participle form of a different verb, okay? So this is the basic structure for a future passive sentence. Okay, so 
when should we use passive? When should we use future passive? So let's review these points about passive sentences and see how we use them in future sentences. So first, generally about passive sentences, use when the action or the condition is more important than the person doing the action. So when the action or the condition is more important than the person doing the action, okay? So we don't want to focus on like me. If I do an action, we don't want to focus on me. We want to focus on that action. That's more important sometimes. We use passive to do this. Second, we use passive when you don't know who is going to do the action. When you don't know who is going to do the action. This is very useful when you're talking to companies or groups of people. So you don't know who is going to help you at the company. You don't know who you need to talk to. Passive is very useful for this, for group situations. And finally, you can use it if you want to hide the person doing the action, so to hide. So maybe, for example, if you make a mistake <laughs> at work and you want to like hide <laughs> it was your fault, your responsibility, you can do that with passive, okay? Of course, people probably will understand it was your mistake, but <laughs> you can use your grammar to help protect yourself a little bit. So. Let's look at some examples of this and let's break down how we do this with future tense structures, okay? First, this is a very common sentence structure if you do online shopping. The package is going to be sent tomorrow. The package is going to be sent tomorrow. So this is an example sentence you might receive in an email. For example, if you buy something on Amazon.com or another online shopping site, you might receive a message that says this, the package is going to be sent tomorrow. So here, we have going to, right? So here's our simple future tense, going to. Next we have be, going to be. And finally, our past participle verb, sent. The package is going to be sent tomorrow. This sentence structure focuses on the action, right? We don't care really who is going to send the package. It's not so important, right? Like I don't care <laughs> maybe who is going to send the package, but I want to know this information, the shipping information, right? We can use this future passive sentence structure to do this. So for example, sometimes the error, the mistake I see here, uh, with learners, they write something like the package is going to send tomorrow. This is incorrect, totally incorrect. The passage is going, oh, sorry, the package is going to be sent tomorrow. So note sent, not send, past participle form. Okay, so this is a really common example of this future passive tense structure. Sometimes also you'll see will here, the package will be sent tomorrow. And that's used in a case where maybe the automatic system gets the shipment time or the, the mailing time right away. So sometimes the mail says the package will be sent tomorrow. You may also see that. Okay, let's look at another example here. So the next example, our project research will be finished soon. Our project research will be finished soon. So right here, will be finished, here's our future passive sentence, or our future passive part, yeah? So in this case, I have will, this is my simple future tense, I have be, will be finished, past participle verb. Our project research will be finished soon. So why is this sentence passive? So in this case, we have our up here, so our project research, this means a group of people, right? Not just me. So in this case, our project research will be finished soon. This is an example sentence, for example, in a meeting. Maybe you have to, your responsibility is to share updates about your project progress, your project research progress. So you decide in the meeting, like, okay, this information I've decided now, your project, our, our project research will be finished soon. 
We use this will be finished because we have a group of people. We don't need to say exactly who is going to do all the different things in the research, right? This is a very efficient way to express our group's activity, right? Our project research will be finished soon, okay? All right, let's go on to the next one then. I'm looking for your questions. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, Juan Carlos has a nice one on YouTube. The car is going to be repaired this weekend. Perfect example, nice one. The car is going to be repaired. Kamal on Facebook says, the gift is going to be delivered by tomorrow. Great, okay. Rosa says he is not going to be accepted to that high school. Oh, you got like my last one here, yeah? Okay, good, nice examples, everybody. Let's continue to the next one. Ah, here's the negative for the person that asked about the negative. So, uh, this, the decision won't be made until tomorrow. The decision won't be made until tomorrow. So we have this negative won't, so will not, right? The decision won't be made. Here's our future passive part, won't be made, yeah? So this is also a very helpful sentence. We use at work and at school. So the decision won't be made until tomorrow. That means no decision is going to happen until tomorrow. And we use won't be made to mean maybe we don't know who is in charge, who is the person that is going to make the decision. Maybe we don't know, or maybe we want to hide it. Like, is it me? Am I going to make the decision? Maybe I want to hide. <laughs> so for example, if the other person comes to you, like maybe the decision is about a day off, you requested a day off, and that person asks you, like, what's the decision? What's the decision? You can say the decision won't be made until tomorrow. So the person in charge, I don't know who that is, is not going to tell me until tomorrow. So we can use this negative. The decision won't be made until tomorrow. Okay, uh, Luina, Uwina on YouTube says, my house will be painted this month. Good. Um, let's see, Venusha, you wrote, they are going to be finished the cake. Mm, we can't use it that way. They are going to finish the cake. They are going to finish the cake. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm looking for some other good ones. Facebook too. Uh, hello to everyone saying hello. Let's continue on to our last example then. So last example, someone wrote uh, an a example that's very similar. Here's another negative one. She is not going to be accepted to that school. She is not going to be accepted to that school. So here's my negative future tense, not going to be accepted, right? So accepted is the past participle form of accept. She is not going to be accepted to that school. At native speed, this sounds like she's not going to be accepted to that school. So this not going to be reduces to not going to be, yeah? She's not going to be. She's not going to be accepted to that school. So what is this saying? This is saying negative. This is a negative sentence about maybe a sad thing. So this person, she, applied to this school, like university, yeah? And the speaker thinks she is not going to get into the school, right? She is not going to be accepted. So we use this passive form because we don't know who is in charge at the school. We don't know the person looking at applications. We don't know the decision process, but the speaker thinks she's not going to be accepted to this school, okay? So we use these future passive expressions in these cases. So the action or the condition is most important when you don't know who is going to do the action or if you want to hide the person doing the action, okay? So this is how we use future passive sentences, okay? Phew, that was a long part two. Oh my gosh, I know, but lots and lots of information. Let's take one more super quick break and then I will very quickly review some question patterns too.
Okay, so if you missed it, the team has a 35% off sale. <laughs> you can see this banner at the bottom of the screen. If you have been thinking about studying at English Class 101 with our courses and with our lesson, now maybe is a good time. So you can find details about the different resources, the different study tools we have on our website. If you click the link below the video, if you're watching on YouTube and above the video, if you're watching on Facebook, you will find this page. And if you want to sign up, great. You can find the link here too. So check it out, take a look if you're thinking about our lessons. Okay, let's go to the last part. The last part is just some question review. I'll break down these question patterns and we'll look at uh, simple future tense questions and some questions that also use passive, this passive structure in question form too. Okay, so let's take a look. I have two groups here. So two groups of questions. So we have WH question. These are our information questions. Who, what, when, where, why, also how, right? And we have our yes and no question. So we can answer the question yes or no, okay? So let's look at this group first. So here we start the question with a WH word. When, where, what, who, and so on. Okay, so here is a basic, simple future tense question. When are you going to leave? When are you going to leave? So this question, simple future tense question, we expect a time. When are you going to leave? 8 o'clock. When are you going to leave? 2 p.m. Whatever. Simple future tense question. We can respond with simple future tense. Also, I'm going to leave at 2 p.m. Okay. Here's another simple future tense question. Where will you go next? Where will you go next? So maybe at the end of the day or for next travel plans or something. This where will you go next? In the conversation, the person just thought of this question. So where will you go next? So you can use this simple future tense question. Now though, let's look at some passive sentences or some passive questions. Here's one. What is going to be provided at the conference? What is going to be provided at the conference? So this is a question. A conference is like a, a gathering of people from the same work field, right? So for example, a language teaching conference. Many language teachers gather together to share information and to meet each other. So what is going to be provided at the conference? For example, food, drinks, hotel rooms, maybe information, and so on. We have this same passive structure, going to be provided, right? What is going to be provided at the conference? Again, in this passive structure, the person providing the food or drinks or information is not important. We want to know the situation or the condition. We use passive, a passive question, to do this, okay? All right? And finally, one more passive one. Who is going to be fired? Who is going to be fired? So to be fired means to lose your job. Yeah, to have your job cut. Not good, right? Who is going to be fired? This is a scary question. <laughs> but this going to be fired is a passive structure, right? So this is saying the person that is going to receive this action is most important. We don't want to talk about who is going to fire, who is going to cut that person's job. We want to talk about the person who is going to lose their job. Okay? All right. So this is how we use our WH question. Let's take a look at yes or no questions. So in lots of cases, in many cases, we can just cut the WH question from the start. If you have a B verb here, you can just cut this off. Are you going to leave? Is he going to leave? But if you have these will sentences and so on, or these passive ones, it's a little tricky. So let's take a look. First, so as I said, are you going to leave? Yes or no? So this is a very basic one. When you have this kind of simple future tense question, you can just uh, remove the WH word from the beginning. Okay. Let's look at a will question then, a simple yes or no question with will. Will you help me with my homework? 
will you help me with my homework? So this is a question for in the moment, right? You say to your brother or sister, mom, dad, friend, will you help me with my homework? So yes, I will, or no, I won't. <laughs> so you can use this simple future tense structure. Will you help me with my homework, okay? Then let's look at some passive ones. Is he going to be given a promotion? Is he going to be given a promotion? Hmm. So again, who is going to give the promotion? We don't know, or it's not important, right? We want to talk about the condition. Is he going to be given a promotion? Hmm, I wonder. So same passive structure, going to be given, yeah? Here's my past participle verb. Finally, another very basic uh, future tense question. Are they going to join us for dinner? Are they going to join us for dinner? So here's a big hint that it's a yes, no question. Are, is, are. These are very big hints that these are simple yes, no questions. Okay? So we can use both groups with just simple future tense and with those passive sentences, passive questions, to create these future tense questions. So passive is very, very helpful, is very useful uh, when you don't know the person doing the action. Yeah? But we have to finish there for today. All right, so I hope that you learned something uh, about future passive and how and when to use it. Maybe I can make a whiteboard lesson about this uh, grammar topic so we have some more detail in the future. Okay, but I have to finish there for today. So I will show you today's lesson boards again if you would like to take a picture. Take your screenshot now. All right, so today we talked about simple future tense. We reviewed will, won't, going to, and not going to. Then we talked about future passive sentence structures. When should we use this? Why should we use this? And some examples. Finally, we reviewed some questions, some question patterns we can use with just simple future tense and with future passive. So I hope that you found some new information and something new to practice. Some good examples are coming in. Karina says, what time are you going to be picked up? Good, okay. Um, will you make me a sandwich for dessert? Do you like sandwiches for dessert? That's very interesting. I've never heard of that before. Okay, I mean, if that's your thing, cool. All right, uh, other examples. Are you going to end this lesson? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, I have to end the lesson. So let's take a look at next lesson's information. Next lesson, I'll be back next week. Here it is. So next lesson will be Wednesday, April 20th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York City time. If you don't know your local time, use your Google skills or you can set a notification on Facebook. You can set a notification on YouTube. Or if you follow me on Instagram, I always post a topic reminder and a link in my Instagram stories. So if you follow me on Instagram or if you don't, you can, you can find that. You can find the Instagram and Twitter from the link in the YouTube description, so find me there. Next week, I'm gonna talk about how to give extra detail with relative clauses. We have not talked about relative clauses for a long time. I like to review this grammar point every so often. So we're gonna cover this. So relative clauses, uh, relative pronouns, and so on, like who and which and that, and how we use them to give more information. That will be next week's lesson Topic. So join me again next time. Okay, I have to say goodbye for now. I am late as always. I talk too much, but I hope that you enjoyed this week's lesson and I hope that you found something new that you can use. Of course, don't forget if you want to get our lessons, now is maybe a good time. The team has this 35% off uh, special discount. So check this out. You can check the details on the page from the link below or above the video. So check this out if you think you might want to study with our lessons and our courses. So thanks so much for your questions and your example sentences. Thank you so, so much for liking and sharing the video and for joining me this week and every week. So I will say goodbye for now. So enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy your week, uh, enjoy your weekend, and I will see you again next time.